Hello, John here with another video and in this uh, video series we're going to be talking about the Commodore kernel jump vectors. Now these jump vectors can be used in both the Commodore VIC-20 and the 64 so if you write a kernel routine for the Commodore VIC-20 that routine will always will work on the Commodore 64 because they both share the same architecture and share the same kernel. Uh, so in this video we're going to run through the kernel jump vectors and I think there's about 40 of them I think and we're going to run through them one at a time just in brief and then in a set of uh, videos after that we will talk to we, we will talk about uh, in more de detail other jump vectors so it, this is just an overview it may run into two videos we don't know yet um, depends how long I rattle on for so we'll get started so the first jump vector is called ACPTR and it's jump vector FFA5 and this routine allows us to get a byte of data off the serial bus and it doesn't matter what device is currently in control of the serial bus we will get a byte of data but before we can do that we have to run the preparation routines TORC and TS, TKSA because if you don't then the, you will not get any data off the seal bus because we have to prepare it first and the data that we do get gets put, in, put into the accumulator and that's why the accumulator is an output, output register it takes 13 stack points so at the very worst it would take 13 stack places so you have to keep that in mind especially if you've got a stack hungry process and you want to use some uh, this particular kernel routine the next one is called CHK in and that is jump vector FFC6 and this routine opens a channel for input so it's opening a channel for the, a device to to talk to us and we have to tell it which logical file number to use because you can have many logical file files open at the same time so the X register has to have the file number going to be used you also have to prepare it using the open command because if you don't open the channel you can't set the channel for input and the registers affected is the A register but that is something that we it's not passed back to us as an output variable it's just used and the X register which we use as an input variable then we have the opposite which is CHK out which is FFC9 and this opens a channel for output so this is opening a channel for us to talk to that device and like with the input uh, channel we have to use the X register to specify which logical file number we want to open for output and we also have to use the, in the same open routine as we do with input to be the output the same two registers get affected there are four stack points being used in this one so four stack bytes and this allows this routine allows us to talk to anything on the uh, the bus then we have CHR in and this is jump vector FFCF now this allows us to get a character from that input channel so it doesn't matter what device we're talking to if we call this routine we will get a character from that device you have to prepare it using the open and setting the channel for input and then we get the accumulator has the the byte um, from of data from that channel now if you don't op use open and check in this <coughs> routine defaults to the keyboard so if you don't run the open and check in routines if you run this routine it will give you the, a byte from the keyboard <coughs> excuse me it will give you a byte from the keyboard because it classes the keyboard as the default input uh, channel then we've got CHR out and this is FFD2 and just like the input this is an output channel 
So this allow this allows us to send a byte of data to the output channel that we've set up. Like in the input, you have to use the open and uh, and ch chk out uh, routines before we can use this. And we put the byte of data in the accumulator. Now, <clears throat> like in the input, if we don't use the open and uh, if we don't pre uh, prepare for this routine, the input would default to the keyboard. Well, the out output defaults to the screen. So if you don't prepare it, it will put all the data to the screen. Right, CI, CI out um, is jump vector FFA8. And this allows us to transmit a byte of data over the serial bus. Now the registers that we use will be the accumulator and that's to set that's going to be populated with the byte of data we want to send but we also have to prepare it with two other uh, routines so we have to prepare you <coughs> execute the listen routine and the second routine All right and we'll get to those later it uses five stack points and the only if a register affected is the accumulator CL all is um, jump vector FFE7 and this is a routine that just closes all your files. So this closes all fa logical file numbers that you've got open. Um, it uses nine stack pointers. There's no input output on it because we're just saying close all. But internally it uses the A register and the X register. Right, get in this is jump vector FFE4 and this routine will get a character from the keyboard buffer Q so with the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 you can be typing away while it's busy and as you're typing it puts all those characters into the keyboard buffer and I think the keyboard buffer is something like uh, 20 characters long once the, um, si once the system is not so busy it will then read the keyboard buffer and in normal direct mode would display that lot on the screen but here when we call the routine FFE4 it will get one byte of that data out of the keyboard buffer and place it in the accumulator it will use seven stack pointers stack point but points and it also affects all three registers internally all right. next one is IO base which is FFF3 and this defines the input output memory page so we have to specify in X and Y the low and high address of the uh, of the IO device um, it, al <laughs> it allows you to find out where the IO device is because I think in the VIC-20 it's in a different place to the C64. So if you want to truly know where it is, you call this routine and it comes back with the address of where the I.O. device is. And it, allow, it means that then you are definitely sure that you'll be talking to the right device um, depending on which uh, system you're on. <coughs> I.O. init, which is jump vector FF84. This allows just to initialize all the I.O. devices. So any device that you've got within the system, this routine will initialize it, no matter what. And it uses all three uh, register variables. Next one is listen. And this is uh, jump vector FFB1. And this routine commands a device on the serial bus to, to listen. So if you want to talk to the disk drive, you would have to command the disk drive to go into listen mode so it can listen on the serial bus. Um, the accumulator has to be populated with the device number. So if it was a disk drive, it could be 8, 9, 10, 11. Or you could say, make it do it to a printer, which I think is 3 and 4. Um, it doesn't use any stack. Um, it doesn't use any stack points. And the only register that's affected is the, ad, um, the A register. 
Here's the load jump vector, which is FFD5, and this loads into RAM from a device. Or you can verify a file on memory. Um, the way it uses is the the accumulator would be set with zero for load. So if you set the accumulator to zero and run this, it would perform a load. Or if you set the accumulator to one or higher, then it will go into verify and it will it won't load the um, data and it will verify the memory against the file. Um, the X Y uh, routine is the start address, uh, sorry, the XY registers are the start address of where you want the load to place it in memory. So if you have an X or Y that set at um, um, 1000, you'd have to set the X and Y register to be 1000, and then when it performs the load, it would start loading in that point. Membot is uh, jump vector FF93 at 9C, sorry, and this uh, basically allows you to find where the bottom of the address, uh, the bottom address of the uh, RAM is. And the reason for this is because in the VIC system, the bottom address of RAM for basic and stuff like that can move about depending on how much memory you've got in it because it has a it has a, <coughs> a configuration difference depending if it's 3.5K, 6K, 16K or 32K. So if you run this routine, you will you can either tell it this is the start of memory or you can get it to um, tell you where the start is. Now if the carry is set, if the carry is clear, it will tell you where the start of memory is by putting it in X and Y. But if you set the carry to 1, and then run the routine, then you it will set the bottom of memory from what you've put into the XY registers. And this is this is useful if you've got, say, some machine code that you want to put into the basic space, but you don't want basic to affect it. So basic normally starts at uh, 0800, I think it is. You could run this routine and say to start at 1800 where basic starts and then you could place your machine code program from 0800 to 17 ff without w worrying if um, basic is going to get in the way mem top exactly the same as mem bottom but it's set in the top end of memory now i use this in my um, uh, tdsos program <coughs> and to set the top of basic to be 7 FFF because TDOS starts at 8000 um, and it's the same as the mem bottom if you if the carry's clear it does a read if the carry's set it will write what the memory top is right open FFC0 this allows you to open up a logical file to a device so once you have set it up and set the name you can then load the uh, you can load the file logical file open uh, you, uh, where well you can open it up using this function which allows you to do input and output to it now the difference between um, open you're basically opening the file. You're not telling it what to do with it yet. That's what you're going to do later on when you set to channel, uh, input channel or output channel. This is just basically up to open that file, num that fi logical file number uh, available. Make it available. Plot. This allows you to set or read the current cursor location on the screen. So, if the carry is set to zero then it's a read so it'll tell you back what the X and Y coordinates of the cursor on the screen is or you can tell it where you want to put the cursor by having the carry set to 1 and then specifying it in the X and Y. This is good if you want to move your cursor around 
without having to print down, 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 across, 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 up, up, up. You can, if you know exactly where you want the cursor, you can say, I want the cursor on row 10, column 16. And we'll go through this in, uh, in detail when we, do, when we do further videos. Uh, RAM test is FF87. This performs a RAM test. So when, this is normally used when you've set mem bottom and mem top. If you do a RAM test, it will confirm that all the RAM is, is OK between those two limits. This is normally used on the, the, the Commodore startup. RD time is FFDE, and this allows you to read the system clock. So it uses all three registers, A, X, and Y as outputs, and it reads the system clock in three bytes. So it returns the most significant byte in the accumulator, then the next significant byte in the X register, and the least significant byte in the Y register. So it's a very big number that will come out from the system clock. And just remember, the system clock always starts at zero when you turn the machine off and turn it back on again. It doesn't remember what your time was. Right then, I've just had a look at the clock and we're 16 minutes into this video okay uh, already. So uh, what we'll do now is we've still got an awful lot of jump vectors to talk about. So I'm going to split this into two and we'll start a part two um, on the next video. So, with that being said, I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.